What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next we are going to be going over some really cool books I picked up recently. There are some high-grade books in here, some rare books in here, just overall some uh, pretty interesting stuff that I don't think you'll see all that often. So let's check these out. Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So you actually saw three of these books already. I'm not going to show those again, but three of the books that I picked up uh, in this large group of comics. If you watched my video about the $1,500 that I spent at that local convention for my building a comic business uh, with just $300 series. I showed three of the books uh, from this set at the end of that video. Uh, there was the Haunt of Fear 19, uh, the Tales from the Crypt number 28, and the Zoot Comics I don't remember which one, like 14, something like that. Uh, but I've got a bunch more books here. We're going to go through these. Again, like I said, some pretty cool books. So let's get into these comics. So the first one here, uh, this is one that I've been trying to pick up for a while. Just wanted to be able to have a copy. That's I've talked about that before. I've, I've got my, my Keeper videos. If you just watched my Keeper video that I put out recently uh, where I had two new books added to that Keeper list, if I could keep everything, I would. You know, it's, it's one of these things where I am not a, you know, like a multi-millionaire or whatever. And so if I could keep everything, I would, but I can't. And so what I do is I have my, my comic business and when I sell books, I use that money to buy more books. And then every time I get new books in, I compare them on my keeper list. And if I like a book more than what's on there, I'll, I'll swap books out, that kind of thing. And that's how I build up and, and I'd say like improve my keeper list of books over time or my PC over time. This one, I, I, I am going to sell it, uh, but it is one of those that I'm on the fence about. Like at any moment I could maybe pull this one down, <laughs> you know, uh, just because I've been going after this book for a pretty long time. And this is a pretty nice presenting copy. Uh, this is four color number 16. And so this is the series one. This is this, uh, Mickey cover. It's, uh, Mickey Mouse outwits the phantom blot. And you can see up here, it says first Mickey Mouse comic book. And so for, for Mickey Mouse, for Disney collectors, I would say this is probably the biggest book that, that Disney Mickey Mouse collectors go after. Uh, a comparable book with Disney would be like Walt Disney's Comics and Stories number one. Uh, so this is, I mean, you almost call this like Mickey Mouse number one maybe or, or something like that. Uh, but this is a very nice presenting copy. Just, it has this person's name written up here on the top, but overall a... Uh, Pretty solid book for a, a 4 0. I mean, that cover looks nice too. I mean, I would say it's, it, I'm sure it's been pressed. Uh, I mean, it was graded a little while ago. I mean, it's got a serial number that starts with a two, so graded a little while ago. Um, but I mean, could it do better? Maybe. I mean, this is a really nice looking four, uh, but maybe do better than a, than a four might be worth like it's one of those it's like you think about like trying to resubmit i can't imagine it getting below a four like that there's a risk of it dropping to a three five uh, this is a really solid presenting copy but one you don't see very often there's one that at my local convention there's a guy there that has one up on his wall but it's restored and he has like this it's like, he's got like 10 grand or something like that on it and um, maybe it was even more than that. It was a very high number when I asked to see it on the wall. <laughs> so uh, I, I passed on that one, but uh, I, I don't see them often. And that's one of the few times I've seen them and it's at that small local show. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was a cool book. Four color number 16, call it like Mickey Mouse number one, kind of, sort of. All right, so that's the first book. Now the second book here. Uh, this one, I actually, I think I referenced this book in my, in that last video, because uh, I believe I showed a Zoot Comics number 12, which is a Jack Kamen cover. I also picked up a Zoot Comics number 14, which is a Matt Baker cover, and uh, here it is, and this is a ridiculous grade. 
I mean, 8.5 is a ridiculous grade, especially for a Fox Feature Syndicate book. I've talked about those a number of times, you know, like where they've got this uh, little banner, or not, I call it a banner on the side there on a lot of their books. It really shows, like, this is a very square copy. There's a, the banner is a very even there. And, I mean, you can see up here, Matt Baker cover and art used in Seduction of the Innocent over here, classic cover. This is a great book. Now, the thing to be, to, to watch out for with Zoot is Zoot had some weird numbering. Uh, this is the March edition. There is a, uh, there's a not, I don't know when the other one came out, but there's a one that's not designated as the March edition. And by March, and you can see it's March of 1948. This is the much more expensive one. So if you are looking at this book and pricing it out and you see a Zoot Comics 14 and it is not this cover uh, and you're like, oh, you're looking at prices, that's the, the less expensive one. Uh, so, uh, but an 8.5, crazy grade for this book. This one also presents extremely well. The uh, main thing on it is there are some dust shadows on the back cover that you can see like over here on the side and down on the bottom. But man, just really, really uh, nice copy of this one. This is one where I could def I could see someone using that, you know, like the method to try to remove the dust shadows or lighten them and probably get a, probably get a bump on this book. And this book, I mean, it's tough. And all these Fox Feature Syndicate books are tough and high grade. This is pretty early Baker, you know, 1948. But yeah, cool book. Zoot Comics number 14 and 8.5. Yeah, it's just a crazy background there. Like the lady getting carried off by these birds. Yeah, all kinds of... There's some weird stuff, you know, in the covers in the Golden Age. Next one here. Speaking of Matt Baker, we have got Teenage Romances number 36. 4.5. This one's, it's an interesting Baker cover. I don't really know what the story is that's going on here, uh, but this guy is tossing her some clothes and telling her to get out of her uh, her wet clothes and stop acting shocked. I don't know what she's shocked about. Uh, obviously, I, I can't see the interior story or if this cover even goes with anything in the story here, but the Matt Baker romance books have definitely been one of the hottest Golden Age books on the market for the last... I don't know, maybe a year or so, eight months to a year, they have really been taking off. And I, I think this is a pretty great cover for it. And that's one of the things that you always have to look for with those Matt Baker romance books. It's not just all of them. Now, granted, all of them have been getting kind of like lifted, but the ones that are the most in demand are the ones that have kind of like the more interesting cover content. And I think this one has a pretty good cover content to it. You know, the attractive woman, the she's wet clothes for whatever reason and whatever's going on with this guy on the story. Uh, so, and just a nice presenting copy. A 4.5 for these Baker romance books are is actually a pretty nice grade. Generally, you don't see them much above like a 6. Uh, so this is a very solid copy of this Matt Baker romance cover. All right, so that is number three. All right, now for number four, I showed this book on my uh, uh, Instagram recently as well. This is one of my favorite pre-code horror covers. This one has really grown on me as I've seen it a few times. I've owned it one other time. I had a much lower grade copy, like a 2.5 or a 3.5, something like that. This is Weird Mysteries number two. This is a Bernard Bailey cover. Bernard Bailey, he's another cover artist that has really grown on me for his PCH stuff. I don't care for his specter stuff and the more fun run i know some people just love those books not for me i don't really care for those but his pch stuff is just so high level and what i mean is just the level when you when you look at different artists in that era or you look at different covers certain artists put you can just feels like they put more effort into the covers like there's more detail and his covers just always have a crazy amount of detail on them sorry for the reflection but crazy amount of detail on them and you can see this one especially has tons of faces on it. I actually talked about that in my recent new pickup video, my, my top 25 video or the new pickup. One of the books was uh, one that to me felt like Bernard Bailey. Uh, it was kind of like a PCH book, but before Bernard Bailey was doing PCH. And, uh, but I, it just almost feels like that's where he kind of got some of his ideas from, was that, uh, that artist. Uh, but yeah, I love the black background all the faces here. You've got these two faces up in the top here as well with the crazy eyes and just all the different expressions. It's just, 
there are some PCH books where it's, I feel like they just take like skulls and they just like copy paste them all over the page. This is not that. This is a lot of time and effort and uniqueness to this cover. It's actually, I think this one presents above the grade as well. And the main reason is uh, the cover note is like heavy tanning, I think to the cover, uh, because it's a black cover, it doesn't really show up. And so that's what's really hurting the grade. Otherwise just a really beautiful copy. So next up, we've got another, I've never owned this book before. This is a pretty nice grade for this one. It's from the Bobby Blue Collection. This is Horrific Number One. Uh, the Horrific title has some pretty cool covers in it. Um, but uh, yeah, Horrific Number One, got the woman in the red dress, you know, creepy ghoul guy in the background, the, the fire scene on the bottom. A lot of the Horrific covers are done by Don Heck, but this one is not Don Heck. Now it's not credited to him and it doesn't really look like him. So, uh, but 5.5 is a very nice grade for this book. And like I said, from that Bobby Blue collection, the Bobby, Bobby Blue collection, that's that one that Flip Mode Comics picked up uh, and has been, been selling. Um, that collection has, tends to have some very nice colors on those books and this is no exception so 5.5 horrific number one now uh like i'd shown in that that last uh that last video we're gonna get into a little bit of of high grade ec and this cover has always caught my attention i have had one copy before uh, that i picked up from an instagram sale i got that one graded did not did not get this grade this is a very nice grade this is Weird Fantasy, number 13 in an 8-0. Like the Red Planet covers the same thing. I like that Famous Funnies 214 with the big Red Planet. This has kind of like a similar like Red Planet in the background. I think this is a Feldstein cover. Yeah, yeah, an L Feldstein cover. It's got his little uh, signature block on the bottom there. But this one just catches my attention. And anytime you can get ECs, whether it's the sci-fi or the horror or anything, in this type of grade, you know, like the VF or higher type ranges, you know, 7Os, 8Os, 9Os, that kind of thing, is very difficult. They do not come up very often, and uh, so it's cool to be able to uh, to pick this one up to get a few pretty high grade EC books. And so, Weird Fantasy number 13, really cool cover, 80, very nice grade for this one. Next up, we have another. Weird Fantasy, nice grade. Uh, this is a book that I actually posted about on Instagram as well recently because I sold a raw copy, a little bit lower grade copy, well, a lower grade copy than this one. This one is an exceptional copy. This is Weird Fantasy number 18. This is an 80, which again, like, you just don't see them. You do not see these books in this type of grade outside of like the file copies, the Gaines file copies that, that come up. And so not, not even a Gaines file copy, 80, uh, this has this uh, classic Ray Bradbury story inside, a very well-known story. Uh, this is also a Feldstein cover, um, but he does not have his signature block on this one. But I think this is one of the best sci-fi covers. Uh, it's just something like, it's just, it's so futuristic. It's just, it feels like it's really like leaping into the future with how this looks. It doesn't feel like it's made up. You know, it's like he actually had like a vision of what this stuff could look like. And there's so much detail on this one. I really like those those Golden Age covers that you can tell the artists put a lot of work into, where they have just tons of little small details on them, and this is uh, this is one of those. So, so yeah, Weird Fantasy number 18, 80, just a crazy grade. And I'm probably going to say that a few times uh, <laughs> throughout, uh, throughout this video, because uh, we've got, got some more crazy grades coming up. All right, the next one here. Now we're moving over to the Weird Science Run. This is actually a pedigree copy, but a little bit uh, older label. So I've considered sending this one in, maybe to uh, get that new gold label. This is Weird Science number 15. I believe this is a Wally Wood cover. Yeah, this is a Wally Wood cover. Let's see if he's got his uh, signature on it. Yeah, he does. So there's his little uh, signature on it. Not as big as the uh, Feldstein ones usually are, but it's, if you can even make it out, it just says Wood right there. But this is a 9-0 Northford pedigree. So you can see the little uh, 
Northford pedigree up here. They did not used to, to make as big of a deal of the pedigrees on the labels. I, I'm glad that they changed that because I think the pedigrees are just, I, I like having like stories behind these books, like some type of collection that you can tie with the book and those gold labels just look awesome. And so I, that's why it's very tempting to send this one in to, uh, to get that gold label. But Weird Science, number 15, Northford Pedigree, 9 -0. Again, crazy grade. And if you like sci-fi, you like dinosaurs, you know, this book has... There are a few of those in these runs where you've got these, like, sci-fi dinosaur covers. And this is one of them. Uh, and, yeah, I know my, my buddy Drew, he really he said he really likes the uh, Wallywood space suits. You know, how he draws the, uh, the space suits on there. All right, so now the next one. I showed this one on Instagram as well. Uh, this is the highest grade copy I have ever had of this book. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's another Wally Wood, but this is going complete other side of the spectrum. Not sci-fi for this one. This is more of that suspense horror type cover. This is Shock Suspense Stories number six. One of the most well-known covers from EC. Uh, it's largely thought of as kind of like an homage to Suspense Comics number three. Uh, like it's got, it's got that feel like Suspense Comics number three. Relatively similar content, except in this one, uh, there is no hero in the background anywhere coming to, uh, to save her from the hooded cultists in this case. Uh, but Edo, off white to white pages, got the, the classic bondage cover designation and just crazy grade. Uh, the nicest grade I'd ever had in this book previously, I think was a six five. I picked that one up from Bry's Comics a while back. Um, but yeah, Edo is a very, very nice grade for this one and just a nice grade for an EC book in general. Shock Suspense Stories number six is one of the EC books that's known for uh, having an exceptionally high grade copy. It has a 9.9. I'm almost certain it's a file copy, but there is a 9.9 out there for this book. Uh, the funny thing I always kind of joke about with that one is it's a 9.9 off white to white pages. So it doesn't even have the white pages. It's a 9.9, but it, it, that one is crazy. That one, when you see it, it just, it looks different. And that's what I've talked about with 9.9s before. The the 9.9s, nine they and why there's that, you know, the whole controversy with them and that uh, Giants of X-Men 1 is that the 9.9s nine just look different. There's something about them. Like, it's like they're just cut a little different and they just, they feel different when you look at them. Um, and so, yeah, there is that one 9.9. Nine. I just think it's funny. It has the off-white to white pages. But yeah, that one... I think someone bought that one back in like 2017 or something for like it's like fifteen thousand dollars and i'm like man that is that is like the best buy one of the best buys out there now i i don't know what that book would sell for now the original art sold a few years back for like eight hundred thousand. that was a wild sale because i remember it was in that it was in a heritage auction and a 9.8 sold in the same auction as that original art and the 9.8 went for like twenty eight thousand, something like that and then that original art went for like 800000 So this kind of shows what that... It was the original art for the, just the cover. Just the cover. All right. Now moving on to another nice EC and another pedigree. This is one of the pedigrees I, I like to get because it's one of the bigger pedigrees, one of the more well-known pedigrees. And I've just... I've always liked this cover. I've said... I think Jack Davis was probably, in my opinion, like the most skilled artist at the time working at EC. It's just the, again, it goes to that level of detail in his work. I also just tend to like a lot of his covers. This is Tales from the Crypt, number 38. I really like this cover too. Now, this is one of the covers that was known for, because uh, this is 1953, getting kind of close near the end of when, uh, the, the before the Comics Code Authority was established. This cover has the original art out there, which shows that this was actually dialed back. Uh, so there were all these like limbs and things like from him, like swinging into this, uh, into this coffin, these limbs like flying out. Uh, and those have been uh, removed in this cover to make it a little bit more uh, PG-13, I guess, than R. Uh, but this is the Davis Crippen D copy pedigree. And so this one, I'm also considering if I'm going to send it in to get the, the new label as well. Uh, Here's the, uh, the back cover here. The main thing, like this is a really beautiful copy. The main thing is it has uh, some foxing on the back cover. Uh, that's really what is holding this book back. Uh, it's a little hard to see in the light. You can see it along the spine there. It's that foxing, it's these kind of like brown dots, but front cover, just incredible. Like great colors, very clean, 
beautiful copy. And I think this one would, again, it would really pop with that, uh, that gold label on there. 7-0, off-white pages, Dave Scrippen pedigree. Really cool book. Um, I have had a couple copies of this one as well. I actually had a double cover of this book at one point. Um, but, uh, but yeah, 7 0. Awesome. All right, we have got three books left. Three books left in here. And they are no slouches. First one, this is the first time I have ever had this book. Uh, this is the first appearance of the Old Witch, one of the main characters in the in the EC horror books. You'll often you'll see her on like the side in one of those bubbles. Uh, so this is Haunt of Fear, number sixteen, and this is the earlier number sixteen. This is one of those where they had kind of a weird numbering, and that's why you can see up on the top it also says number two. It's from nineteen fifty. Colors on this copy are incredible. I mean, in eight o, got this bright yellow. The, the bright yellow on the top just looks so good. Just And this is a, a more understated horror cover. It's not, because it's that's 1950. It's before they're getting pretty crazy. Like 53, 54, that's when you start getting all the really crazy, super violent covers. Early 50s is much more toned down. <laughs> so you just have a couple people with a vampire in the background and uh, they're wondering, you know, why he's not in there and they're about to, you know, probably die at the hands of that vampire. But Edo, incredible copy of this book and just amazing colors on this one. This one, this one's also pretty cool. This is the first time I have ever had a copy from this pedigree. And so this is Haunt of Fear number 20. And this is a Gaines, you can see it up there in the corner here, a Gaines file copy pedigree 9.2 white pages. So. Not only it has the high grade, it's a 9.2, it's got that page quality, white pages, and it's the Gaines file copy. Another one of those that you can get the gold label with if you want. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, just look at that thing. Like, colors are killer. Just an amazing copy of this book. And then the other cool thing with this one is that this one actually comes with the original certificate from EC designated as the uh, Gaines file copy, signed by William Gaines and Bob Overstreet. So I think that's pretty cool. So this is the Certificate of Authenticity, and you can see that this is number 11 of 11. So uh, William Gaines had 11 copies of this book. And so this is 11 of 11, got a 9.2, and it's got those, uh, I, I'm assuming those aren't printed signatures. You know, it's got those signatures down there, Bob Overstreet and William Gaines and Russ Cochran. Uh, so Haunt of Fear, number 20, I, I think that's a cool addition with this book. Because a lot of times those certifications that go with the pedigree get lost and there's nothing else maybe that's designating it as the pedigree and so you almost have to like keep it in the slab and you know have to have that transferred through. You know if you're ever sending it into CGC you've got to make sure you don't crack it out or you might lose that pedigree. Uh, so that's one of those things that's really cool with, with this one. I've had a few others. I've had Crippens that have come with those original uh, certs. I've had the Okajima books that have come with those original certs. So it's just a cool addition. And that one being signed, that's pretty fun too. All right, the last book. Last book here. We're going with Gasly Graham Ingalls for this one. This is probably considered the most famous zombie cover that was done, at least part of as part of EC. This is Haunt of Fear number 17. This one is also from that uh, Bobby Blue collection up there. You can see a little note up there and a 7.0, which again, very nice grade for this book. Like I said, anytime you can get books in that VF range, you know, and so 7.0 is fine to, to very fine. So you get them up into that VF range and you just don't see them. I mean, they do not come up very often. And so to have this number of them uh, to come up and, and being able to pick these up, I thought was pretty incredible. Uh, but 7 -0, one of the most in-demand covers from Graham Ingalls, that just classic zombie cover, just the, the large faces, the big, you know, focus on those characters. And his characters, I mean, they do, they often have that just extra creepy vibe to them. He got, that's how he got his name. You know, that's, that's why he signs it ghastly, you know, down there. But 7 -0, Haunt of Fear, number 17, the last book in this box that I'm showing in this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, saw some cool stuff. I feel like some of these books, like you're just not gonna see very often anyway, 
but then to see some of these in these grades is just pretty incredible. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. I've got more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos, subscription button is right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.